Hi, and welcome to Cat Ren Figures. I'm your host, Caitlin, and today we are going to be reviewing Gamora issue one. All right, so before we start the before we start the review, I should start out by saying this is more of an origin story for Gamora than anything to do with Guardians of the Galaxy. This is actually what takes place before she's a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So jumping right on into it, we find out that this is Gamora's birthday. And as a present to her, Thanos has set up for her to go and destroy this royal bloodline of Badoon, which Badoon was basically the whole reason why her home world was destroyed and she holds them responsible for the deaths of her family and her entire race. So we get to see this great little imagery where she goes in and she's just slaughtering everyone she can. Right there. Dun, dun, dun. And she makes her way to the prince who's being coronated. Also, we get to see this great little fight scene between... I say fight scene, but it's literally just them bickering. It's uh, Thanos and Nebula, which probably one of my biggest complaints about this comic is the fact that Thanos just doesn't look to scale. He, he looks small in this book, which Thanos is a huge, towering character, and he should not look like he's that that close to size with Nebula. There's no way that he should look a good foot taller than Nebula or Gamora. He should tower over both of them. But that's what the artist went with. However, I gotta tell you, the art in this book is beautiful. I love the way that Gamora is drawn in this. The color's done really well. I love the use of the red for the blood with how it's Spitting for the jugular. She went for the jugular. Yeah, don't fuck with Gamora. But, yeah, she's destroying the royal bloodline. This is her revenge, her birthday present. And it means quite a bit to her. And I love the inner monologue between, between Gamora and herself. Just dealing with it. And once it's all over, she realizes... She doesn't really feel better. At the same time, we get a little side story. Um, a little side story with Thanos and Nebula, which once again, not to scale at all. They're going, and they're going for a certain powerful orb. <sighs> yep. So... They don't find the orb, but they find this guy who apparently is a keeper of all knowledge and wisdom in this kingdom. And Thanos gives him to Nebula and tells Nebula to impress him with these talents she keeps saying that she has. We then dis we then find out that uh, the king of Badoon had a daughter with one of his royal harem which they don't keep girl children. Normally girl children are smothered with silk pillows. So the fact that a girl child was smuggled out safely and then dropped off in Ublix is crazy. But uh, yeah, there is a princess that has been long since hidden away from the dune. So, in order to try to save the Badoon line, they are going to try to get back this princess and put her up as a ruler of sorts. Basically, she's just going to be a puppet ruler, a regent, until she can pop out a male heir, and then that would be their real king. I mean, they have, they have no interest in having a woman as their leader, so down with Badoon. Anywho, getting right back into the comic, we get to see Nebula and Thanos and their loving sister bonding time. 
which turns into the two of them fighting each other, and yeah, Gamora puts Nebula in a bit of a chokehold, and Nebula stabs Gamora with a piece of shrapnel, and then goes to try to rip out her hair. Well, Thanos isn't going to have that. He says he tires of this bic this childish bickering between the two of them. He then also informs Nebula that if Gamora were to ever die by her hand, he would see to her end himself. So he loves this entire book. He's gone on and on about he doesn't love her, but Gamora is his favorite daughter, his only daughter. Nebula is just a ward in his eyes. The only one that he actually looks at as being his child is Gamora, which also kind of calls back to the movie, if you're a fan of that, which I'm sure everyone is going into this. But we get to see Nebula work through a little bit of the family stress, which is torturing this Badoon. And she finds out about the secret hidden away princess. So she, of course, rushes off to Gamora to tell her exactly how she's failed. That the royal line continues with the Badoon princess that's been hidden away. So Gamora rushes off. Ublex. And... We get to see there are a number of individuals that are looking for this princess. Thanos, of course, did not give his daughter permission to leave, and he wouldn't have because he knows that the world she's headed off towards, no one leaves alive. It's that dangerous, even Thanos is a little concerned for his daughter. He's about ready to kill Nebula until she said that you only said if she died by my hand, not her own. And he states Nebula tricked her. Anyway, Nebula say, says that she didn't have to, that Gamora knew she was taking a one-way trip. But this is what she wants. She wants to end Badoon. She wants to succeed in getting her revenge. So it's going to go into her on this horrible planet. And the covers for the next issue look a lot better than this one. I hate this cover. Gamora is drawn way better than that in the actual issue itself. Um, yeah, so my biggest complaint with this book would probably be Thanos' size. He's not very proportionate to what he should be compared to his children or even just random people. I mean, the Badoon guy looked almost to scale with Thanos. It doesn't make sense. But yeah, so I liked this comic. Give me a like if you like this video. Comment below and tell me what you thought of this issue. What were your favorite parts? Tell me. Uh, are you hoping for better for better covers in the future? Did you love the art like I did? Do you have an issue with Thanos' size like I did? Uh, subscribe to my channel for more comic book content or check out any of my older videos I have up for offer here on Catherine Figures. And until next time, I'm your host, Caitlin. Bye.